Alessandro Delpi Retro. Has he still got it? You can bet he has. Oh, the referee's been called over to the monitor. We're having a good look at this one. Oh, it's over the bar. And I can confirm he has not still got it. Another day, another trip out. We've come to Derby City Centre again. Um, I've got to get Mini Ghetto's name registered, so it's going to be officially Mini Ghetto. <laughs> um, whilst I'm here, obviously, you know the drill. I'll be going to a few places. I only came here from last week's vlog, so I probably won't do too much filming unless I find something um, worth picking up, worth filming. Um, but failing that, I'll see you guys when we get back because there's loads of jobs we need to be cracking on with in the 3.0. All these day trips are great, but yeah, I've got stuff to do back in the games room. So I'll see you real soon. Okay, so whilst I'm in Derby, I figured I might as well check out their new game store as part of the Sports Direct franchise. See if it's any uh, bigger or better than the one in Burton, which surely can't be hard, right? Let's, uh, let's see what it's saying. about this the only thing about it is i think i'd rather buy it on the switch it's the sort of game that i'd like to have like portably sort of game that you just waste a bit of time on right sat on the sofa or lying in bed playing um 16 pound it is very tempting but i don't know do i hold out for a switch copy i did not know football manager was available physical on the console <sighs> i'm too busy i will lose my life to these games but i'm always tempted man I, yeah Championship manager is the reason why I didn't get better grades at school. <laughs> it's probably best if I leave that alone. Okay, so me and Mini Ghetto hunting PS3 Essentials. I mean, I was only here last week. I'll be surprised if it's anything I need. Did I say earlier in the vlog, I've got all the Assassin's Creed Essentials? How many Assassin's Creed games were there? And did they all get Essentials releases? I don't even think I've ever even heard of Assassin's Creed Rogue. So yeah, looks like uh, another addition to the collection. Um, so what else there is? Fallout 3 Game of the Year edition. I'll have to check to see if I own this one or not. Don't own Fallout 3 Game of the Year edition, but it's too tatty for me. I'm not paying £6 for that when it's battered, I'll pick that one up down the line. Mortal Kombat, I think I might need that one as well. I really want to buy this after getting the steelbook for the other one, right? It'd be nice to have number two in the collection. But as we found out last week, there's no manual and sadly there's not a normal copy of it where I can take the manual out. £15 too much for a game that doesn't have a manual. Um, so yeah, the hunt for both of those goes on, I think. I think I've got most of the Lego ones now. I know I've got those. Hmm. Guys, I've never seen this game, never heard of it. Tekken Hybrid. Apparently it got released in 2011. I honestly know nothing about this game. Never seen it, never heard of it. Let me know in the comments. It says it contains Tekken Tag Tournament. I don't know if it's like a compilation, it's written behind the sticker. Um, yeah, interesting, I'll have to do a bit of research on this one. Okay, so I peeled the sticker back and now I can see it. It's got Tekken Tag Tournament, Tekken Tag Tournament 2 and Tekken Blood Vengeance the movie. Uh, there is actually quite a few copies in this DX, more than I thought, somehow it's escaped me. Um, tempting to pick it up, but this one's not in the best condition, so I'm not gonna be buying it for 18 pound, and the fact that there are quite a few in stock. Uh, but yeah, it might be one for me to look at, maybe pick it up on eBay if I can get it cheaper than here, but yeah. Let me know in the comments if, you've, uh, if you own this one.
cultural ghetto. Start the day with last night's leftover Chinese. Lovely jubbly at six in the morning. Right, okay, welcome officially to this week's ghetto vlog. And there's a lot to be catching up on. Um, it was a couple of days ago now since I actually went into Derby. I've been real busy since then. Uh, I was editing Wednesday's video and a whole heap of other things, but there's loads to get through, so let's just get straight into it. Uh, first things first, last week we discussed um, giving away the Mega Drive sign. I asked you guys to name my favourite Christmas song. As of recording this video, I'll let you know if anything has changed. Nobody's guessed it yet. Um, nobody has guessed my favourite Christmas song thus far, so we're going to roll that one over now till next week's vlog. So once again, let me know in the comments what you think my favourite Christmas song is. It's nothing obscure, I'm not sort of like uh, trying to trick you guys with some weird and wonderful, it's a well-known song. Mrs RG is not a fan of it, I've always loved it, it's always been my favourite song. Um, so yeah, uh, this will now be, when's the next vlog, is it going to be Christmas Eve I think? Um, so yeah, it could be a nice Christmas present for one of you people. So yeah, keep your guesses coming in uh, with regards to my favourite Christmas song. and. Of course, I've got to give a massive shout out, a massive thank you. Uh, I hit 10,000 subscribers um, just after last week's vlog went live. And yeah, you'll be seeing it on screen now. Um, I put a post up about that and there were so many like real positive, fantastic messages. I didn't have time to individually thank everybody. So I want to thank you all now for obviously supporting the channel, subscribing, uh, all those fantastic like comments that I got off the back of announcing that we'd hit 10,000 subscribers. And, you know, massive shout out to the Ghetto Gang, and yeah, there's just, yeah, so many things I could say, but I'm not going to turn this into an Oscar acceptance speech. Ultimately, it's just a number, right? But um, it doesn't change anything. I'm not really that driven by numbers. I do this because I love doing it, and I love the fact that you guys enjoy watching it, but it has also been a focus of mine. It's something that sort of kept me motivated. Um, at the start of the year, I was on 6,000 subscribers, and I said to myself, right, if I sort of really dedicate myself and give everything to the channel, try and do two videos a week, every week consistently, and try and put out the best content that I can. Um, you know, rain or shine, wherever I'm feeling good, feeling ill, whatever, stay on the grind, stay hard, as uh, David Goggins would say, if you know, you know. And um, yeah, so it was just sort of like something I was always working towards in the back of my mind, something that kept me focused and try to hit that this year, and we've done so. So yeah, I just wanna give a massive shout out to everybody that's helped along the way. And speaking of um, the Ghetto Gang, I've also got the Discord set up now. So Ghetto Gang members are now uh, part of a Discord. We've got all different threads set up on there. This old band's learning new skills. I pretty much know how to utilize all of Discord's functions, I think now. It's just a great place because we've been sort of sharing charity shop finds, like deals that are out there. Speaking of deals, I've got something big coming, hopefully on this week's vlog. I made a bit of an impulse purchase, but a deal came up that was too good to be true. It's a big thing, but I'm excited by it. Um, hopefully I'll show you on this week's vlog anyway, so we'll get to that later on. Um, but yeah, we're also sharing games that we're playing, games that we're completing, um, YouTube links to interesting videos, all that kind of good stuff that, um, yeah, that I love to do really. So if you're interested in getting involved with the Ghetto Gang Discord, link will be below. But uh, yeah, I think that's like most of the housekeeping out of the way, right? So you guys have seen my uh, footage from my little trip into Derby where we went to name Mini Ghetto officially. And um, yeah, my CX look's been brilliant. On last week's vlog, we found those like that Dragon Ball Z steelbook and some other stuff that I was really happy with, sleeve covers and stuff. And I'm looking now, I've got some real good finds as well. But before we get into that, I just want to highlight the fact that I have also added a couple more Romans for the army. So one of these was from like a family secret Santa thing that we did. Um, so the family's obviously watching the vlogs, which is good. Not really. <laughs> this came from a 90 year old. Um, I don't think he's watching the vlogs. I think maybe Mrs. RG had a word in his ear. Um, but yeah, so that's another one. And this one came from a viewer of the channel. Um, yeah, I paid a little bit more for this one than I think I paid for the others, but I was happy to do so. It's still a good price, and it was, uh, like I say, a viewer of the channel. So uh, much appreciated. And two more for the army. I don't know how many we've got now in the army. Two, four, six, seven, seven. I think we've got about 12 or 13 of these uh, ones specifically. So we're slowly getting there, guys, right? Slowly, slowly uh, building this army. And yeah, hopefully uh, going into next year, we'll be able to 
like build a display. I want like a whole uh, shelf on one of my Billy bookcases to be dedicated to these guys and have a whole display set up. Maybe have like a battle scene going on or something. So yeah, something I'm excited by, but it is a case of slowly, slowly adding them because they're not cheap things to uh, buy in abundance, that's for sure. Anyway, let's move on to my pickups from Derby. Uh, I think you guys would have seen this one on the footage. Uh, I said on last week's vlog, right, I've got all the Assassin's Creed Essentials now. I'm, I don't know how many Assassin's Creed games there are. I mean, this era especially, they're coming out at such a frenetic pace. I'm, I've only really played a couple, so I don't know. But this was one I didn't have. Assassin's Creed Rogue. Surely this is them all now. I think I've got one, two, three. Is it Revelations and now Rogue? How many of them were there and how many can there be in the Essentials range? I don't know, but I was happy to find another one. Um, this does have the es Essentials disc and the manual and everything, so more expensive than the other ones. The other one's usually about a pound, pound fifty. This one's three pound fifty. So yeah, another Essentials for the ever-growing Essentials collection. And then I picked up a game which I previously bought, previously played, my only ever Platinum. Um, I don't collect PlayStation 5, so... I bought this game new, played through it, had a lot of value, traded it back in once I'd done with it. They've recently announced a DLC for it, uh, so I had to jump back on it, and that is of course God of War Ragnarok. I mean, listen, you guys, if you've watched five minutes of any one of my videos throughout my whole channel history, you'll know how much I love God of War, right? So, as soon as they announced DLC, I had to jump on it. I was surprised they did DLC, because there wasn't really any DLC for the previous game, God of War 2018. There was only like a new game plus, so I'm not really into that, I'm not the kind of guy that's going to play through the whole thing again on like a harder difficulty setting that's just not my vibe but uh, this looks really interesting so this is like Valhalla and it looks to me almost like um, how the old Muselheim trials were that's how I'm imagining it one of them sort of almost like roguelike where you go a bit further and a lot more things obviously uh, I'll give you guys my thoughts on this as and when I get to it hopefully on this vlog because I've still got to finish Spider-Man first really enjoying Spider-Man um, I don't think I've got too much left of it the way the storyline kind of feels like it's picking up pace now. Um, I'm enjoying it in its own right, but now I've got the impetus to get it done for this. Yeah, I'm going to really crank it up a notch, so hopefully we'll be getting Spider-Man finished. Maybe even tonight if I get a chance to do so. So yeah, I uh, re-bought Ragnarok. And I made, I think I traded mine in for like £48. Um, I've now bought it back for 40 And when I'm done with it, I'll be trading it in again. I think it's like £28 trading because I'm not collecting PS5. Certainly not at this stage, maybe one day down the line. Uh, who knows, but right now I'm not collecting PlayStation 5, so that'll that'll cost me about 12, 13, 14 pounds to play through Valhalla, which is fine by me. Anyway, moving on to my favourite find of the day. So, the way that the CX Derby branch is set up, all of the good stuff is behind the counter. That really annoys me about CXs. Now, I get why they do it, especially in certain cities, like where people are probably just running out the shop and stuff, right? But it's very awkward when you're in a queue, especially if it's busy, to say, can I have a look at that? Ooh, can I have a look at that one? Can I have a look at that? And then they do that awkward thing where they're showing it you and they don't want you to hold it because they don't want you to run out the shop with it. And you get to that point where you think, you know what, I can't even be bothered to keep looking at this stuff. But I saw this and I was like, let me have a look at that. And that is, it's something I've been after for a long time as well, man. Uh, on the Nintendo Wii, Pandora's Tower. So it comes in this limited edition big box. I've always admired this box. I don't know what it is. I think it's like that matte black finish. And you guys know I'm a Nintendo cardboard guy, right? At heart. So I love buying the bigger box stuff for the Nintendo Wii. I'm trying to slowly get all those sleeve covers and all the bigger things, as I say. So this and I think it's Last Story were like two that I needed. Um, I've looked at some gameplay of this and this looks really good. Its power release was in 2012 and it's an action RPG. Uh, you play as Aaron and he tries to rid his love Eleanor of a curse and... I've seen some of the footage, like I said, I've watched a couple of reviews and it looks very macabre, right? Um, to see this young heroine sort of like eating hearts and things like that to rid herself of this curse, it looks really interesting story. And speaking of The Last Story, which is the other nice big box Wii game that I still need, I watched a review for that as well and that doesn't look like something I would enjoy playing as much as this. This game, you sort of like playing through a tower. I've always enjoyed games where you're sort of in one location trying to work your way up. There's something very sort of satisfying about that to me. And I think, yeah, I think I'd enjoy Pandora's Tower. I'm going to try and play this through the Wii U and hopefully playing it on HDMI will help me out because as I'm always saying, my old man eyes don't really adapt too well to this generation like the Nintendo Wii, the pre-HDMI 3D. Um, but yeah, this does look like one I'll be intrigued to put in and have a go with. So like I said, it was behind the counter. I asked him to pass it to me 
Um, it was in good condition. Like I say, nothing major. The odd tiny little bump in the corners, but this was really nice condition. It was very much an impulse purchase. But if you look at what we've got, we get a really nice steel cut with this. Look how nice that is. It's almost a shame this won't be on display, right? Maybe one day we'll find room to display this and it won't just be sat in the box. Um, it also comes with, I've not even looked at this. So this is like a huge instruction book. It's actually behind a bag. So it's been done in such a way that it looks like old. A really nice instruction book. And really nice artwork on both sides of that steel book. Uh, it also comes with, of course, the game itself. And a smaller version of the instruction book. I always find it odd when you see Wii games in black. Um, look at that, black spine on a Wii game. Just, yeah, just hits different, right? And then, of course, an art book. Um, and what really sold me on this, even more so than the fact that I've always wanted all the Wii cardboard. So this was here, in good condition, £45. Yeah? Um, so I had a quick look, and... CEX don't differentiate between the Pandora's Tower Limited Edition and just the game. Now, I don't think you can ever buy just the game. To my knowledge, it always came like this, but that doesn't mean CEX are necessarily sell it like that. You could potentially buy this online and get just the game itself. Um, so I thought, right, okay, well, I, I think that's a good price. And then when I went to buy it, he said there's been a price reduction, because it's probably been sat behind the counter for a while. It's now £38. So I was like, win-win. I think £38 for a real nice limited edition big box Wii game like this. I think I've won there, right? So yeah, make sure you let me know in the comments if you've ever played this one and what you think of my £38 purchase because I was absolutely delighted with this. It really did make my derby trip. I shouldn't say... <laughs> I mean, we went for a magical event, right? To name my child. Um, but I'll be honest with you, this, this, this made the trip for me. I was really happy with this. And yeah, my CX run is going well at the moment. We do have more planned for this week. We've got another day trip planned where we'll be doing at least a couple more CX stores, I think. Hopefully keep that run going, right? And uh, all the usual shenanigans, there's more work to be getting on with here in this room. So, yeah, man, I've got a few jobs to go and do now. Hopefully, uh, next time you see me, I'll be finishing Spider-Man, ready to start God of War. But, yeah, man, it's going to be another busy week. Let's get to it. Okay, so, driven by the desire to play the DLC for this, I've really got to be cracking on with this. So, yeah, try and get as much done tonight as we can. Uh, let's go. Convince them to give up this crusade for revenge. They've both done so much good for the world. Be careful. You harass my men, destroy my equipment. And that is Spider Man done. Um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of you watching played this and finished it a long time ago. When did it come out? Was it 2018, 2019? I'm definitely late to the party on this one, but really enjoyed it. Really good story. Um, there was only one or two missions I didn't really enjoy. Everything else felt fresh. It didn't have stakes welcome. It was uh, a good length and there's loads to do. And it's that good a game that if things were different, if I wasn't sitting here on 1500 games, most of which need to be played, I'd happily go through this, do a lot more of the side missions, the collectibles, etc, etc. But such is the way that my backlog weighs heavy on me. Um, it's very rare that I do more than just a story in games. But yeah, that is game number 20 of the year. And you know what? It's nice to get some use out of the PlayStation 5. I started 2023 having got the Platinum for Ragnarok. And I finished it completing Spider-Man. And they're pretty much the only two games that I've really played properly on this thing since I bought it. So uh, yeah, nice to get some use out of it. And... In a way, playing this game late was a blessing because I got to play the remastered version with obviously updated visuals, etc. So yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, and now I'm going to go to my bed, but <laughs> tomorrow, hopefully, we can make a start on the DLC for this. Um, this is the only Platinum I've ever got, such as the way that I play games. I don't sort of, I'm not an ultimate completionist. I just play through the story. But I wanted to get the Platinum in all the God of Wars. Um, I haven't done anything about it platinum them in the other ones thus far hopefully next year but uh, as a result of the new dlc i think there's like eight more trophies to get on this um i think it's a bit more fleshed out than i thought it was gonna be so yeah i'm um, looking forward to getting my teeth back into god of war 
And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be playing this on this vlog and I'll be able to give you my thoughts on this. Um, tomorrow, we're heading out again. We are hunting and uh, yeah, you'll be seeing me tomorrow. We're going Cannock Way and I think we're going to Tamworth. So yeah, charity shops, CEXs, everything in between where I can find video games. I'll see you then. So on what is a very wet and miserable day. <sighs> uh, stopped in at the locals on the way out for this hunt. Um, it's that one where there's no signal, so I don't know. But Madden 18, often some of these more obscure sports, uh, the title's got a bit of value, even if it's an older one, such as this one, 2018. I don't know, there's probably no value in it, but worst case scenario, I've spent 99 pence and the game's gonna sit on the shelf. Uh, it's not the first time, and it certainly won't be the last time that happens, but uh, yeah, Madden 18, next time you see me, we should be hunting in Tamworth. Okay, so I've made it to Tamworth. The weather is such that I've had to put on big coat. <laughs> put on big coat. <laughs> um, I just see the CX now. I don't know if I've ever been here. If I have, I certainly don't remember it. So, uh, yeah, man, let's take a look. As is customary, made it to the PS3 section. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Borderlands. This fighting edition. I've got this on 360, uh, £15. Uncommon one, definitely worth picking up if you see it. Oh, hello. Oh, we've got a winner here. Dragon Ball Xenoverse Essentials, £3. Nice, fine. That is, that's going to be coming home with me. Let's see what else is in here. in the comments if you've ever played the Prison Break video game. I've never heard about it, never heard anyone talk about it. I've never even seen it before. If it was a couple of quid, I'd gamble all six pan. I don't know, I enjoyed the first couple of seasons. Um, yeah, let me know if you've played it. <laughs>
Dark Polar games in many ways. That's one of the best selections I've seen in any CEX. Um, it would seem a collector's traded in lots of steel books. You'd have seen some of them there. I bought some. Um, and all in really nice condition. Seems so coincidental. So many steel books all in like pristine mint condition. You don't normally see that. Usually steel books are all dented and scratched in CX. They've been around the houses. So yeah, um, really impressive. Obviously I'll show you everything I get back. Show you everything I got once we get back. I'm, I'm lost for words. <laughs> My day keeps getting better and better. I found all those steel books and put at risk trying at Greg's the mint hot chocolate. It's absolutely banging. Cheers. <laughs> okay, so that was Tamworth CEX, and as I say, very successful. Great selection. Uh, we're now headed to the Canuck outlet, like Designer Village, and then from there, hopefully, I'll have time to go to the Canuck CEX as well before we go. See if my run of finding good stuff at CEX stores can continue. Say hello. Oh, you're rubbish at this. Right, I'll see you there. Okay, so my golden run of CEX store finds has come to an end. I didn't leave empty handed, but definitely nothing special. Um, right, I'm gonna have a look at the few charity shops that are on the way back to the car, because I've got to get back. I'm struggling for time now. And uh, yeah, I'll show you everything I've bought on this trip. Okay, so I am back in the 3.0 after, yeah, uh, what well, turned out to be a decent trip. Um, let's fly through everything that I picked up. So. On the way to, uh, where were we now, Tamworth, found this in a charity shop. Like I say, uh, it's the charity shop I often reference that never has any signal, so you can't check. There's a few obscure sports titles, some Madden games and other things that do hold value, even like the older ones, this is 2018. This is not one of them, this trades in for 90 pence, so I've lost 10p on this one. Um, so yeah, not going to cry over that, but I'll probably trade this back in now and get this to CEX because I don't really need a Madden game sitting on my shelf. Um, but yeah. It's worth a gamble, I think. Um, live and you learn, right? I know for next time. And then uh, I moved on to Tamworth CEX. I don't know if I've ever been there. If I have, it was a long time ago and I certainly don't remember it. Uh, honestly, I think in terms of the selection that they had, probably the best CEX I've ever been to for that moment in time. I'm not going to say it's the best CEX I've ever been to. It was quite smallish. It was decent, but I wouldn't say rushing your droves to get there. But... I think I said on the footage, it seems to me as though a collector has traded in a large collection of Blu-rays, uh, steelbooks, there's loads behind the counter, loads of Blu-ray steelbooks, um, and then loads of video game steelbooks. The shop was just full of them. There must have been, there was more than I filmed, because today was a bit of a rush. There was, um, we were on a bit of time constraints. We had to get back for RG Junior getting from school. Um, but yeah, I must have seen over 30 video game steel books there, which I bought a couple, which we'll get to shortly. But yeah, you just never see that many, and they're all mint. Normally, when you see steel books in CX, right, more often than not, they've been through the mill. They're like dented, scratched, yeah, they've been passed around from pillar to post. These were all mint, so yeah, definitely looks to me as though a collector had traded in. And yeah, uh, when you hunt CX in the way that I do, where you're looking for steel book sleeve covers, uh, special editions for the standard price, this was as good as it's ever been for me, so I was really, really happy. Um, but before we get into what steelbooks I picked up, 
Uh, there was also a couple of PlayStation 3 essentials that I needed. So the first one that I picked up is Saints Row 3, the full package. Uh, this was a 2009 release and this is what I really enjoy about collecting for PS3 Essentials. You can get versions often or the best version to pick up. So this one comes with three downloadable mission packs, over 30 DLC items and it's a franchise I've never really put much time into. I was always a Grand Theft Auto guy and these are very much tongue in cheek. From the clips I've seen, I don't know if it'd be a bit too silly for me, a bit too, too much humour if you like. Um, I shouldn't really comment because I've never really played one so I'm not in a situation to judge so let me know in the comments if you're a fan of Saints Row but I just always looked like it would be something that was maybe a little bit too silly uh, for my tastes when I'm yeah I'm more accustomed to playing something like Grand Theft Auto which in itself has quite a lot of tongue and cheek elements right but yeah uh, for £1.50 another one for the collection so I was very happy to add that to the PS3 essential shelf speaking of which I think you saw this one on footage I was so happy to see this because, yeah, Dragon Ball, everything, wherever it be, movies, manga, games, it's somewhat sought after. And I don't think I've ever seen the Essentials version of this one before. So this is Dragon Ball Xenoverse. <clears throat> this was a 2015 action RPG fighter. And yeah, like I say, I just don't think I've ever seen it with a nice red sleeve before. And it just feels to me like one that you should be picking up all dragon ball z games when you sort of take to ebay to look at dragon ball games especially essentials i think more and more people are trying to hunt them down now right yeah you're not picking it up for three pounds so see this sat on the shelf um of course with the manual and also the red disc both of these had the correct disc uh, behind the counter which is always a bonus yeah i was just very happy uh, to pick this up and yet another one off the list. Like I say, I'm trying to get as many as I can without resorting to eBay, right? Um, it's just keeping my passions ignited for traveling around the local areas, going to CEXs and seeing what essentials they've got on the shelf. And wouldn't it be fantastic if, it, if I could complete the whole set, not only in person, because I've had a few people donate to the channel, but um, sort of supporters of the channel and through finding them in person, yeah, I'd love to be able to do the full set in that way, right? So, yeah, we'll see. I know it's going to get a lot harder as time goes on, right? Already I'm starting to see the same ones over and over again. Heavy rain. Everywhere I go, there's an Essentials version of Heavy Rain for some reason. And that takes me on to the Steelbook. So, the first one uh, was a PlayStation 3 game, and that is Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway. I didn't know much about this one, but this is a 2008 first person shooter. This is a third installment in the series, set during the latter stages of World War II. I wasn't going to pick this up because when I buy steelbooks, I prefer them to have the sleeve. I don't like buying steelbooks that don't have the sleeve. You can't see what they are on the shelf, right? There's nothing more annoying than a blank spine. But this says exactly what it is on the spine. I had a quick look on eBay and there was nothing on eBay with the spine. So I'm assuming this is one that never got released. Uh, not a spine, sorry, the sleeve. I think this is its release. I don't know if it's coming through on camera, but there's like different textures to it. This is sort of like gloss here. Really nice steel book. And again, like I've said about all of them, absolutely mint. Not a mark, not a scratch on them. I mean, for one pound, I mean, what can you get for one pound, right? Not a lot is the answer. Not a lot at all. Um, so yeah, I was never going to be leaving this behind for just one pound. And uh, yeah, I'm just having a real good run with CEX after finding... The uh, Wii game that we found the other day in Derby, and yeah, man, just this is what it's all about, right? Having these runs and enjoying it as and when they come along. So that takes me then uh, to my next steel book, and very similar to that one, one which um, I originally thought, mm, should it have a sleeve cover? Took to eBay, no sleeve cover. So I thought, yeah, and uh, this is a franchise that I want you guys to sort of educate me on because it's one that I've thought many times about putting the disc in and actually playing it because I've heard a lot of good things. Uh, so the one I picked up was Dishonored 2. Uh, again, there was no sleeve covers for this that I could see on eBay. And the cheapest version of this available on eBay was £12.50. And as you can see, this was just £2. Uh, a nice steel book. Uh, so it's my understanding that these games um, are very sort of open-ended. You can do missions in various different ways. You can sort of use stealth. You can go through these games without killing anyone. Or you can do what I'd probably end up doing and just... <laughs> Organs blazing, kill everyone that moves, right? That's how I usually end up with these kind of games. Um, but again, look at that, just £2 uh, for, I'm going to keep saying it, a, a mint steelbook, not a scratch on it. And with it not having um, a sleeve cover, of course, it's got the name of the game on the spine. And 
yeah, like, <laughs> there was a lot of steelbooks there, as I keep saying, but I wasn't going to spend loads of money on some of them. Quite a few of them were, like, newer releases, and I wasn't going to buy games that I didn't really have any interest in playing at a high price, so, yeah. Um, and then I did pick up another one, and this kind of fits the same bill, only this one does have its sleeve, and that is Rainbow Six, uh, Tom Clancy, Rainbow Six. I did have a quick look because I didn't know if this is one of those games that would now be offline, but it's not purely online. I think there are some small offline elements that you can do in this game, but to my knowledge, the servers are still available as well. And I really liked the sleeve. I thought that was really cool. The spine, sorry. I thought that was really cool. It's getting late. <laughs> I'm tripping over my words. It's been a long day. Um, any marks on my jumper are baby sick. <laughs> Which pretty much tells you how my day is going. Um, and if over these vlogs, over the next few weeks and months, you see my eyes slowly getting more and more closed, yeah, <laughs> if you've got young kids, you know, right? Sleep is getting less and less. Um, but back to the Steelbook. Yeah, nice one, this one. And it comes with like um, a code to download the Rainbow Six Vegas, Rainbow Six Vegas 2, and other stuff in here. Uh, whether it's still available or not, I don't know, but still nice to have. For again, what was a real low price of just £2.50. So, all of these, one, two, three, five games, £10. That is some CEX haul in my opinion, right? Two games for the Essentials Collection, three steel books, all in nice condition for £10. Yeah, man, this is, this is CEX hunting 101 right here. So, I was really happy... Um, when you go somewhere specifically for the CX, you never really know how it's going to end up. When I was looking, because we are going to Cannock, and I was thinking, right, Tamworth is kind of on the way, so we'll go Tamworth. So when you sort of like go in there and you sort of put in all your hopes on a CX store, you never know how that's going to go, right? You might think, oh, I've paid for parking, I've done this, I've gone out of the way of taking a detour for what? Just a standard CX store, I've walked out with nothing. But yeah, on this occasion, it paid off, and I'm really happy that I decided to check out Tamworth CX, and... Speaking of CEX, I've never really been overly impressed with the Canuck CEX. Uh, ultimately, a CEX is only as good as the games that are inside it, right? And on the two times I've visited that one, there's not been anything. I did not leave empty-handed, though. Um, I did mention recently that I'm trying to get all the Pro, Evo Pro Evolution suckers for the Xbox 360. It's just a nostalgia thing. I played every single Pro Evo with friends. And when friends come over... Um, we now play on the kiosk. I love playing uh, Pro Evo with mates on the kiosk. It gets competitive. It's not long before the elbows come back. She studied such like close quarters. And I genuinely enjoy looking back at all of the Pro Evos because you can sort of like pick one off a shelf, put it in, and you're sort of transported back to that time. All the team rosters are different. And yeah, it's just, just always a good time. So I picked up uh, Pro Evolution Soccer 2013. And I picked up Pro Evolution Soccer 2014, and they were, yeah, just £1.50 each. So, a relatively cheap collection this is going to be. I know that 2019 is a very expensive title, but we'll worry about that once I've got all the rest. And, yeah, man, um, like I say, we had to go to the Canic area anyway. We did some Christmas shopping. We went to the Designer Outlet Village. And uh, to come away with the slot as a bonus without spending much money. Yeah, man, happy with that. Uh, what I'm going to do now is kind of get the kids to bed. Once that's done, it's finally time for me to try out the God of War Valhalla DLC. Um, I finished Spider-Man, so that's put to bed. And now it's time for me to get acquainted with my old friend Kratos. So, yeah, I'll check in with you guys later when hopefully I'm uh, back with the Leviathan axe in my hand <laughs> in a bit. Oh, it feels good to be back. I've forgotten all the buttons like, but time to get reacquainted. Look, I know you expect more from a smart man alive, but I wouldn't always check in the dark about this place. Which is why I urge you to seek fair guidance. Repeatedly. Does not seem eager to speak with me. Wow. I remember that throne. Okay, so that's my first trophy of, I think the seven trophies that I need to maintain 100% for the game. That was simple enough, just change my appearance. Don't think they're all gonna be that easy. So I've been playing for about three hours now when there's actually 10 trophies, I've got two. 
Um, what's really interesting though, and what I'm loving, so like sort of long-term fans of the franchise like myself, it's now going back through the Greek realm. So now I'm in sort of like ancient Greece, um, theoretically at least, and it's sort of like talking about past transgressions in some of the older video games, and it's just nice to revisit that because um, it almost felt like a separate game at times going to uh, the Nordic realm. There wasn't that much talk of the sort of original games in the Greek realms, but yeah, it's really good to sort of go back to those same areas, those same rooms and corridors, but with PlayStation 5 graphics. I'm really enjoying this so far. Okay, so it's time to call it a night. It's getting late, really enjoying this. I've uh, got four of the trophies. Most of them, from what I can see, are just attained by playing through the story. Um, but yeah. We'll get there. Good morning! It's very much the day after the night before. I stayed up to the early hours playing Valhalla. Really enjoying it. Um, it is almost like a roguelike god of war. If you think something like uh, Hades, where you have to sort of battle your way so far... Um, and then each time you can sort of level up and then you start back to the start but some of the power-ups you keep some you lose similar to that only the big difference is with a game like Hades You're trying to get as far as possible until you reach the end and once you reach the end you finish the game With the God of War Valhalla DLC you kind of get so far and then the game Will open up a bit more story to you and then it'll bring you back to the start and then you sort of repeat that process but the same kind of structure applies in that some upgrades will help you on that specific run and fewer upgrades will be permanent upgrades which will help you for your future runs. Very addictive uh, gameplay loop, really enjoying it. Um, as I say, there's 10 trophies, I think I hit four last night, so uh, yeah, quite a bit more to do, but thankfully they all seem to be story based, so I shouldn't have to grind too much outside of doing the story. But look what's arrived, a massive box. Uh, I mentioned this earlier in the vlog, I made a very large impulse purchase, right? And that's what that is. So we're going to be opening this very soon. Excited about this. But before that, everybody's favourite part of the vlog, right? All the new games need putting away, uh, including the stuff that we picked up from Super Game Shack. So you know what that means. Montage. <laughs> Okay, so that montage has taken care of most of the games. 
the PS3 Essentials and the Big Box Wii, that's going to be less straightforward. Um, let's try and sort out PS3 Essentials, shall we? So, the inevitable happened. We ran out of the allocated space for the ever-increasing PS3 Essentials collection. Ultimately, I'm going to need four of these shelves um, to fill the whole collection, but we'll get to that over time. A lot of the standard boxes are going to be duplicates once this is complete, so we'll be able to take a lot of these out. I don't need two copies of the same games. I think I've got a plan to make a lot of space for my Essentials collection. I think what I'm going to do is go down here, because this shelf is not being used for anything at all. This is just nothing. And the Capcom Home Arcade I can put somewhere else. So theoretically, these two rows here of standard PS3 can be dropped down into here. And that'll work nicely, because that'll then feed on to the old school PS3 uh, games, which are down here. And that will open all of this up to ultimately become a PS3 essential shelf. So that'll future-proof me for quite some time. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. With that all done, now I can add the PS3 Essentials to the set. So with PS3 Essentials done, I then moved the Capcom Home Arcade to down here. It fits in perfectly uh, on that little shelf there, so really happy with how that kind of came together. The only thing now left to sort out is this beautiful box here. It's a tricky one because if we look at the Wii section, it's very full. I don't want to give up this. I love displaying the overkill kill hand cannon. I don't want to sacrifice that. And yeah, I mean, obviously I can exchange Zumba. That doesn't need to be there, but there wouldn't be enough space and even in terms of the height I'd have to bend the top of this and I don't really want to do that I've done it with the red steel 2 box but that's because there's already some damage up there anyway and I'd like to have the red steel art on display as well because this is a real beautiful um, set this one I'd love to have that on display and this on display so I think what we are going to do in an upcoming vlog is rework the whole Nintendo Wii collection just so I can make better use and display things more. So this will have to wait for another vlog in the future because I am eager now to crack into this big box here. So yeah, let's do that. Right, okay, let's get into this big box then, shall we? Um, so there might be a few of you watching that already know what this is. And the reason I say that is because I had, I think five people send me the link for this and I appreciate every one of you five people that sent it to me um, I'd already seen it I myself sent it to Kev Kev bought I don't know two or three of these um, this is something that I kind of wanted anyway but it was ridiculously expensive when these came out it was over 200 pounds uh, they obviously didn't sell too well because they ended up on is it called shot Two, um, like a bargain um, sort of website which sells things at a very low price this got reduced I think it was like 66 pounds and it was available on PS4, PS5, and the Xbox series of consoles. So I think quite a few people bought multiple of them because the PS4 one in particular was, as I say, the same kind of 66 pounds. But CX were giving like over 100 pounds cash and I think like 133 pounds or something like that trading. So there's a lot of money to be made on them. So I know some people bought quite a few. I think Kev bought a couple 
uh, or maybe three so they would basically pay for the one he had uh, which makes perfect sense I didn't jump on these straight away because I I was on the fence I was sort of thinking to myself well CEX is gonna act fast if, the, if this many people have sent me the link to this then they're gonna be on it quick and I didn't want to be in a position where I've spent you know 180 pound on these things and I couldn't get rid of them or I was giving them to CEX for less than I paid for them I didn't want the hassle um, and also I didn't know what console uh, what yeah what console to buy for because PS4 they're giving the most money for but it seemed weird to me to buy it for PlayStation 4 when it was available on PS5. It felt a bit backward. And I don't play it for PS5. So yeah, I didn't really know what to do. And then I kind of waited a couple of, like a day or so. Um, CEX acted fast. Because I know Kev got these the next day, took them to CEX and had already reduced the prices. So I reckon they'd seen this deal or got wind of it before they'd even received a lot coming in. Because it couldn't have been any quicker than him he went in like literally i think it was like nine o'clock the next morning his came next day really early and as i say the prices had already been reduced in terms of what cx would give for it so i'm kind of glad i didn't buy multiple of them but when i then went to look at it again ps4 was sold out and it left me with ps5 and that made my decision easier because i didn't want this to move it on to make money on it i wanted this for my own collection uh, even though i don't collect ps5 but anyway that's a long-winded story as to ultimately uh, how I've ended up with this um, but here it is and uh, I think I've probably built it up enough right so let's kind of show you guys what I've got and then you'll see exactly why I bought this and why I couldn't turn it down for that price uh, for the collection so let's get into it it's a big box it's a very big box <laughs> right let's empty it down here these will be flooding eBay real soon, I assume. Uh, if there are still any of these in stock, I'll try and post the link to you guys below in the description. Because, um, yeah, I wouldn't hang about at this price. This is... <laughs> wow, it's big. Oh, no. Yeah. So this is... <laughs> PlayStation 5 Street Fighter 6 Collector's Edition. So, like I say, I was kind of sat on the fence about it. And what sort of forced my hand, because I was sat there and I was thinking to myself, this comes with two Street Fighter figures or statues. I collect Street Fighter figures, right? How could I not buy this? And it's the only way you can get these two characters. They're not available in any other figure format. So I just thought to myself, what, what am I even debating on? Just because a lot of other people buying them to make money on or whatever, that wasn't my motive and I didn't, that didn't have to be my motive. Like I say, for me it was just, it was a great price. I, I love Street Fighter, even though I didn't immediately click with the game. I did say when I resold it that I would be buying this game back at some point. It just, it was one of them games that when I had it, there was a lot of value in it and I didn't have the time to put into it at that time. I knew I'd come back to it and what better time to come back to it than this, right? So uh, yeah, let me get into this. I'll try and open it carefully. gotta love these tabs right shout out to these that come off really easily because some of these things can be the bane of your life when you're trying to get them off cardboard <laughs> we'll speed this up because there's three more we've got to take off right okay we are ready I've not done any sort of research into this. I've not watched any unboxing videos. I don't know exactly what comes inside it, apart from the two figures. So, now the sleeve's off. Let's get into this box, shall we? So, what does it say? Uh, Mad Gear Metro City. Okay, so, as we open it up, we are met with copy of the game. I believe this is the steel book of the game, right? Yeah, so this is the steel book version of the game. And there's also a one year ultimate pass content. So I mean, if you look at the value, right guys, £66. 
I was thinking of it as £33 per figure that you can't get anywhere else. Already a good deal. But then, if you look how much you'd have to pay for the game, or what you could theoretically trade the game or sell the game for, I mean, this was a no-brainer. It really was a no-brainer. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Right, okay, so, underneath this section here, we have... To be continued, get strong. I don't know what this is. Oh, it's like an art book, but it's done in like the style of a magazine. I love Street Fighter artwork. I'm so glad I bought this already. I'd have been gutted watching other people unbox these, because I'm sure, I won't name any names, but I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot of these on YouTube as videos very soon. Um, and I'd have been sitting there kicking myself had I not picked one up at this price. And then in here, it's like an envelope, and this looks to be full of stickers, I believe. Yeah, so loads of stickers, Street Fighter Roulette stickers, of course. I mean, I'm not saying this is worth 200 and something pounds, whatever it was originally rrp that, but I can see why it was expensive. There's a lot going on in here. Right, okay, so that's that layer. We'll put that back on. And then we'll take this whole section off. I don't think there's anything else in there. And then we've got another layer. So what is this? This is... Question. Ah, so these are like dioramas for the figures. So you can use these are like the backgrounds, um, the fighting arenas on the game. So these have got like a stand piece that you can put uh, behind these figures to display them. Right, okay, so then we can see the figures themselves. Let's get these out. Is that everything? Let's just see if there's anything else in here. No, pretty sure that's it. I mean, that's enough, right? I think there's enough going on. Yeah, that's everything. So, let's get this big box out of the way. And let's try and get into these figures, shall we? So, I've got all the other Street Fighter Collector's Editions, I think. Um, yeah, I've got Street Fighter 4 on the Xbox 360, got Street Fighter 5 one on the PS4. The reason I was never really on my radar to buy this is, you know when well-known game franchises try and ram new characters down your throat? And that's what I felt like Street Fighter 6 has done. Like, if this had been a statue of Saga and Ryu, for example, I'd have been all over it. I wouldn't have cared about the RRP prize, but they're trying to sell me on these new characters. This is Kimberly. I can't remember what this guy's name is. Um, it's good to fight with, but I just don't warm to him as a character. Um, I haven't really warmed to any new Street Fighter characters for a long time, if I'm being honest. And I haven't loved the Street Fighter games since probably Street Fighter 4. I enjoyed Street Fighter 4, um, which is why I've got the kiosk sort of themed after it. But yeah, 5 became okay, but I'm not writing 6 off just yet. I've not given it enough time. I just didn't fall in love with it immediately, that's all I'd say on it. Anyway, let's get into this. Man, there's a lot of tape. <laughs> I've had enough of being patient. Right, okay. Let's get into these statues, shall we? Right, so they are proper statues that come on bases. But I should still be able to display them in with my Street Fighter figures. I'm not going to get them all out now and set them up. We'll probably do it on next week's vlog. Um, I'll try and open it the best I can. I'll tell you what, I'll sort of do it with overlay now so you'll be seeing um, the figures themselves. <clears throat> but yeah, um, I think, like I say, for that price, it is very good value. I don't know if I'm going to have room in here for this big box. This might have to be something which goes into storage and I'll just keep the game and the figures in here. But like I say, £66. I'll try and post a link if I can, but I would have been gutted had I not ordered one of these and I've seen everybody else unboxing them. Okay, so I really wanted to show you guys these figures. Uh, so I got them out, got them all set up. Real nice detail, actually. Um, I was quite impressed once I got them out. High quality. I prefer an action figure um, to a statue, certainly in this scale, but yeah, they are very well detailed for what they are. So they will probably end up going on the Street Fighter shelf um, somewhere. I'll play around with that at some point next week. Um, 
<laughs> I've ended up moving things around. This has had a bit of a knock-on effect. So, this space that we created earlier um, after moving PlayStation 3 down here, I've now turned into a bit of our PlayStation 3 Collector's Edition shelf. So these were previously on the shelf down there. Uh, the God of War Ultimate Trilogy Edition fits in well there, to be fair, because it's such a big thing. When it was on the floor, it stuck out, whereas here it kind of works because it doesn't really encroach on anything. And it's kind of all a bit of a God of War theme as well with this. Really happy to get this uh, front face in. Um, so yeah, I think that's worked out really well. And uh, the reason I've done this is because I have housed the Street Fighter Collector's Edition down here. And it looks, guys, as if there's a start of a PlayStation 5 collection happening down here. I don't know how this has happened, but it looks like I might be collecting PlayStation 5. And on that bombshell, I think that's going to do it for this week's Ghetto Vlog. Um, yeah, a week full of amazing finds, right? Um, my CEX look... Long may it continue, right? Because, yeah, I'm delighted to keep finding all these things at good prices. And there's loads for us to be cracking up with next week. Uh, we've still got to house this. I've been saying this the last two weeks. I've got to rearrange the whole Wii collection. There'll be more hunting. Remember to let me know in the comments section below your guess for my favourite Christmas song. There will, of course, be a midweek video, which I'm already working on on Wednesday. But the next vlog will be Christmas Eve. Um, so I think we've got to do something special, right, for a Christmas Eve vlog. Uh, so what I want you guys to do is to ask me some questions. We'll do a bit of a QA. and a I think that might be a good way to sort of see the year out of vlogs. So if there's any questions that you really want to ask me, just simply put in the comment section below, like Christmas question, and then ask me the question, and I'll get through as many as I can on next week's vlog um so yeah let me know my favorite christmas song let me know what question you've got for me and we'll do all that on next week's vlog as i say so yeah man i'm just gonna keep rolling with the positivity as always many thank yous for watching um and 10,000 thank yous for everybody that subscribed hopefully this is just the beginning we're gonna keep trying to get things bigger and better here at the retro ghetto so if you are watching you enjoyed the content you're not subscribed please consider doing so we've got loads planned for next year and beyond so as always thank you play your games keep it retro i'll see you next week in a bit you're watching the retro ghetto 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 yeah <laughs> into the retro ghetto oh. alessandro delpy retro has he still got it Oh. Let's go again. Shocking.